We're making room. We are making room. That should be enough. So what are we doing today? Well, let me tell you. Okay, so we're going to be working on the 2234 single carburetor. Uh, it, use, it's, it uses a stock carburetor with no venturi, which gives me a total of 34 millimeters of venturi. Uh, well, no, no venturi, but throttle. And um, this thing makes a lot of power. But I ran it in 119 degrees. Yeah, I think it's 119 degrees Fahrenheit. It was really hot that day. And um, I just wanted to get back home. You know, I was at work. And I guess the heat just got to me. And I wasn't paying attention to my oil temperature. And I was doing about 90, 95, following traffic, of course. You know, following traffic. That's just the way it was moving. And when I looked at the oil temperature, it was about 252, 252 degrees, the oil. And right there and then, I knew this engine was probably done. And I was right. She's done. Um, <clears throat> just needs an... Uh, we're going to take it apart because we're going to do a, a line bore. We're going to take it into the machine shop, so do a line bore. Um, everything's going to stay standard. I, I don't think there's any uh, damage to the crank uh, it, itself. Like, for example, we don't have... To, I'm going to check the sizes, though. Uh, the, the journal sizes, I don't think we need to uh, machine them or have them sized up on the bearings. So hopefully we can stay standard, 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 except for the bearing that goes on the case. So it's going to be three over, I think, because right now it's two over on the um, main bearings. So we are going to take it apart and we're just going to get this thing back on the road because this thing is a whew, this thing is a sweet beast to be riding. This thing is fast. So, that's where we're done. Taking it apart. Alright, so, let's just get to it. So here we are. Uh, yeah, those things have been ported, so they're a little bit bigger because they need to flow more. But uh, yeah, this is more or less what I did on these. Uh, this is called slingshot. Okay, you just open up those things in the middle. This allows for a lot more airflow without having to make those things bigger because they're sharing the same runner kind of at the at the end. So both runners feed one cylinder. This is kind of like a big ass uh, single port, kind of sort of. But uh, Edelbrock is the one that did that first. I'm not claiming uh, that I discovered it or anything like that. Uh, I'll just co I'm, I'm just copying Edelbrock, what he did with the V8 uh, flathead. So he did a manifold like this for the V8. So that's exactly what I did. That's why it's called a slingshot. I'm going to see if I can take this off. I should be able to. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'll just put it over here. Oh, that's what happened to that thing. I had dropped one of these a long time ago, and I still remember. 
and it got lodged right there. <laughs> okay. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other cover off. I'm actually going to remove the engine from here and put it on my uh, engine hoist, the bottom one that you know lifts it up and down, so that I can remove the flywheel because this is the very first thing I have to remove before I split the case. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. So like I said, I'll just take that off and uh, we'll move on. Perfect. So we got our uh, engine locked so it won't spin so we can loosen that nut. This is a CB nut. A CB nut. <laughs> Yeah, a CB nut. Really, it didn't come out right. Uh, so this is a lot bigger than the original standard nut. This is high high strength steel. Comes with a bigger washer. So basically, this washer, if you just add silicone to the bottom of it, it takes care of all those freaking little leaks that leak through the dowels. So you don't have to worry about, you know, contaminating your your pressure plate or your flywheel. So, so I made this. This uh, socket from a cheap China thing that all I did is just cut this guy because it was more rounder to the size that I that, that fits that fits this tool. See, that's why there's blue paint in there because I was painting the mark on the head right here so that I could slice it with the with the uh, with the angle grinder. So. That's how I did it. Uh, I just marked it CB Performance because it's the bigger one. And this is a, let me see what it says here. One and a half. Let's see, it's one and a half inch socket. So that one goes there. Well, we'll put it over here like, like so. There you go, like so. Just grab a socket. Uh, I think if this is a 716th socket, it goes there. And just that, and that'll that'll break. That should be able to break it. I might need a breaker bar actually. I'm not sure, but I should be able to do it. Um, the values for stock here here they are. You set your torque wrench to whatever when you hook it up to here, and uh, it'll correctly torque it down to see like 30, 25 pounds equals 200, 225, 30 pounds equals 270. I usually go like 35 pounds on here. So it'll give me just over 300 pounds because these are, these are high torque and you don't want to loosen up that nut right there. So I go a little bit higher. I've gone as high as 500 pounds. It was a test, okay? It was a, te it was a test. I did 500 pounds, nothing really happened. Um, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and break that real quick. Just I just already broke it loose. <sighs> Anyways, I really need two hands for this, but that's the only way you're gonna get it off. Um, I use uh, Loctite on the threads just to ensure that that thing doesn't come loose when I'm screaming, beating the living crap out of this engine. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and take it off. We'll I'll bring you back when we're done. And you can never put enough Loctite. See? <laughs> Always put enough Loctite in there. I don't care. I add a lot of Loctite just to make sure. See, there was no leaks whatsoever. This is perfect. I love it the way it is. Um, Loctite. Always. Even on the bone stalkers. Loctite. A lot of it. And you should be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the flywheel now. We got the flywheel off, so we got this thing back on there. So now I can just take it apart now. Woohoo! I'm gonna take off this first though, the oil cooler, and then when a thin line thing, oil sump on the bottom, and I should be. I'll start opening up the heads and taking off the exhaust, the stainless steel exhaust system. And then we get really nitty gritty. Okay, let's get that thing back on here.
try to do one hander. I already got this separated. I got the bottom one separated. Got this one kind of almost out. Now I'm trying to get this one to s slide out from here. That's two piece, right? This is where they split. Uh, so. There we go. <sighs> She's out. Let's go ahead and remove the pump. Ooh. Oh, that looks really nice. I mean, there's very little to no wear on the face. So I'm gonna remove my my gears so that I can get my tool and extract it out. See how easy that is? Oops. Just use the magnet to pull it out. That is one. That is the other one. Oh, look at the, the wear pattern. See that? The very tip. This one has it too. That's the FK42 cam. That's where it hooks up to. The FK42 cam. So I just leave it like that. Okay. So. Let's see how this thing. Oh. Oh, you know what? This pump is not the same as the other pumps. So I have the tool to extract it with, but it only has that little hole right there, which is one of the ones that I need. And on this side, it doesn't have it. So I'm not going to be able to use the pull the pump extractor tool. Perfect. So uh, we'll take that off when. We are starting to split, split the case. It'll loosen up and it'll come right off. Do it the hard way. Okay, I'm gonna start removing the heads. Now for this, we need to get creative. We need uh, for the, uh, that's gonna be our arrangement for our push rods. You know, push rods, uh, tappets or lifters. You know, cylinder one, two, three, and four so this is because everything's going to go exactly the way it came apart we don't want to intermix these because these are like uh the knuckles the on the uh on the cams they're kind of in like different locations so like this one will probably not like where this one is so if you flip them over they go ah they're, they're not going to like it and you can ruin a cam or your tappets could go kaput so we just want to put everything exactly the way it came out so get a shoe box and do something like this sounds good sounds good okay let, let's open the valve covers okay so let's see what's in there wow that is clean clean okay so i was like what is that um that's silicone that i when i put the valve cover i think i might have mm -hmm. You know, smeared it on. Okay. okay. Yeah, I smeared it on everywhere. Jesus. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all this stuff and um, we'll take the head off. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this off. pattern on these is perfect Woo beautiful I revved the crap out of this uh, everything looks just beautiful I love it I realize I should use square ones I do not care you can kiss my ass it works fine <laughs> kiss my ass anyway uh, lash caps this thing has lash caps so what I'm gonna try to do actually I'm gonna to try to keep them in order just so I know where they go 
but I'm going to use the, the valve cover. Where they go? These are the deep, deep lash caps. Very deep. Always get those. Never get the ones that are almost flush. Those are garbage. And I can't believe they sell those. Okay. So theoretically, this thing, the lash cap should go in, in uh, order. I'm, I'm putting them on the valve cover, but they're spaced out. It, I don't think it really matters on the lash caps. Better. One and two. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay. One. Okay, that's better. Ah, uh, this is where we're gonna put the uh, tappets next. When we take, when we open up the head. For now, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing to the other side. Um, I'm not gonna show you that because it's basically repeat and and repeat. So there you go. I'll bring you back when we're unbolting the heads. Okay, so I don't know what kind of how the heads, not the heads, the. Uh, Cylinders are gonna look on the inside. Did I get everything? Uh, uh, yeah. It just seems like it doesn't want to come out. Oh, you know what? It's the push shot uh, tubes. They're still silicone, very well silicone to the head, so I'm gonna need both my hands for that. Let me pause it. There we go. We got them separated. All four of them. So, now... There we go. Wow. I am... I'm amazed. This thing is like... Whoo. I mean, look at how clean those cylinders are. That's like very little carbon. Very little. Cylinders look... Perfect. Oh yeah. All right. So I'm happy the way everything is. Here are my H rods right here. And they feel really good and tight. They don't feel like they're loose. Like you know, when they're loose, they kind of feel like fuck, fuck, fuck. You just feel it, and it doesn't feel like that. So let me try this one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Feels okay. So you can see these are Chevy. Chevy. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other side now. I'll bring you back when it's like this. Okay. So I can't see any major wear on these things. Remember, I'm, I'm revving it up to 6,000 like five, six, seven times a day or more. And I can't find any, anywhere. Very little to nowhere. <sighs> Perfect. These pistons are still good. So um, I'm going to check the sizes and everything with a caliper and see what they measure. And then the OD on the cylinders and see what that measures. Should be okay though. But it's just a precaution. Let me take those off now. All right, so basically I got everything off now. The pistons, the piston rings, the cylinders, they all look good. Look like they're going to be reusable. These guys look nice and tight. They're, they don't feel loose or anything. Same thing with this one, these H-rods. So I'm assuming the rotating assembly is perfect. I just have to measure the journal where the bearing is uh, worn out. See if the journal took a shit. I'm going to have to do a... a one over on the journals but i don't know hopefully i'll be able to stick i'll, I'll hopefully I'll, i'm still within spec on standard size so there you go check it out uh fk42 right there fk42 uh i've got yeah the pump just slid out once i Took all the nuts and bolts all the, all the way around. I was just able to pull it out with my hand. Just, it's kind of hard, but able to pull it out.
didn't need an extractor or anything like that. It's actually coming apart really nicely. Really, really nicely. So, I'm actually very surprised. See, I just barely did a little bit of force. And this thing came off because everything's loose now. This is the oil seal for the... For the... For the, uh, what you call it? For the pulley. For that guy. So. Okay. I think it'll come off. I can see my lifters getting ready to fall. So I'm gonna actually do that, swivel it less, because they are gonna fall. Oh I thought that was one of the lifters falling off. Okay, you know what? They're just gonna fall off and I don't wanna lose track of where they go. So I got my box right here. I can get them through the bottom. So that's what I'm gonna do. So, let's see. This thing goes sideways. Actually, we'll just do this so you guys can see what I'm doing. So, okay, that is number one, exhaust. That is number two. It's really messy. This is actually the exhaust. And let me get the intake. Oh. Intake. Ta-da! See, this is what I want. Okay, perfect. And they look really good. Like, really, really good. Alright. We're going to swing it over like this, because I don't want the crank to flop on the ground. Alright. She's good! So far, that journal looks really, really good. I went like this to see if there was any uh, lines. It's perfect. I have to measure it with a caliper to see if we're we're gonna have to have it machined. Actually, it's cheaper to get a new crank. It's cheaper to get a new crank than have it machining. Machining, just get a new one. Standard bearings, everything. Yeah. Okay. What I want to see is that bearing that's over here. The bearing doesn't look bad at all. Looks like brand new. Okay, so this side of the bearing was not the problem. Maybe it was the opposite side, right? Maybe. Maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the crank off. And hopefully that'll give me a clue of what in the heck is going on here. So, because I want to see the other side of this bearing, the other side of this bearing, see if that one's bad, see if it's the one that's rubbing. Let me get this out of the way. Lifting. Well, you know what? Let me get the crank out of the way. I don't mean the, the cam. Oh, the journal looks really good. I, ha I po actually polished it. I polished it because I didn't want to trash my uh, double thrust bearings because you usually, when you get angles, angle trans uh, angle transmissions, angle uh, cams, these thrust surfaces, surfaces these, these right here, they're usually garbage. They, they, they will chew up your thrust bearing, your cam bearing. It'll, it'll chew it up if you, don't, if you don't polish it. So I polished them and... Let me double check that. I just want to see how. Ugh. 
there's like just perfect. It's it's like if it was like brand new. Okay. So my thrust bearings were perfect. All right, there. I'm not gonna worry about the thrust. Okay. Here's the other thing that I want to do, and I want to do it right now before I forget. Okay. Okay. So number three, I'm gonna take out number three because I don't want to forget. Working on number four. All right, see, ta-da! My problem is I don't have another surface to put the crank so we can inspect it. Everything's occupied. See what I mean? <laughs> There's no room. Oh, hmm. I'll say, hmm. Okay, I'll make room. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take it off this time. I'm gonna pull it off. If at all. Well, that's a good thing because that means the thrust bearing is still pretty good. I don't think... I don't think this is the bearing that's doing it. It looks like normal wear. So, I don't think that's the bearing. Let me see the ones that I can get to right now. Nope. There's no wear. There's no wear whatsoever. There's nothing, nothing funky about it. Oh shit! I, I don't want to lose that. I just realized I have my um my shims. My shims are still stuck on there. So I gotta be very careful. I don't want to lose that because trying to get the the end play again? It's a nightmare. Okay, this bearing is not worn out. So, I don't think it's this bearing. Oh, that's... This is the shim for the pulley. For the serpentine system. First of all... It feels right and there doesn't appear to be any funky wear hmm okay ah look at that you see that see that that's the distributor gear remember I said I think the distributor gear came loose because I can hear like a clanking noise coming from this area. Look it. It is loose. <gasps> Look at this. Oh my god. Look at that. Look at, look at. It's loose. That was not loose. I think I might have to get a new crank. Doggone it. Something's wrong with this. What are the odds of this coming loose and this coming loose? What are the odds? Slim to none, right? Slim to none. Okay, this bearing here. There is no slack either to the side or anything. <sighs> Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the, the washer right here and pull this off and then take that little spacer right here, take it out and then slide this off. I shouldn't be able to do this. I should not be able to do this. Perfect. Okay. 
All right, so I'm going to measure my tolerances, see if everything is within spec. Oh, almost had it. <laughs> I'm going to be here all day. Got it. Okay, Let's see what's Let's see what's going on here. I don't know. I mean look at those look at that. I don't know what's going on. Okay, whatever. Why is this coming off with my hand? I should not be able to do that. Now it tightened up. Ha! Huh. Okay. All right. Let's see this bearing. Okay. This is the bearing. This is the bearing. This is the bearing that was rubbing really hard. See, right here, just chewing its way out. Okay, so this is the one. All right, see this. Oops, I moved it. It's within spec. It's within spec. So my crank journals, they haven't worn out one bit. They still measure out exactly the same. So, uh, so I don't have to do oversize on the on the bearings. I'll just get standard, standard. All right, that's good. Um, I just found out that um, yeah. Apparently I need a, another one of these that has a smaller OD on the inside. And same thing with this, a smaller OD on the inside. I should get those parts in uh, 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 less than a week or so. So I already ordered them, so we're good. Okay, so the, the crank is fine. It's fine. Yep, it's bad news. Yeah, I went ahead and uh, cleaned it all up, made it all nice and stuff. But yeah, it looks, still looks like shit. It needs to be repainted. It needed to be repainted. Now it's garbage. Why? There's a crack right there. Goes all the way across. It goes to the other side. Goes to this side. See? You can see some of the... I went ahead and highlighted it with the Sharpie. And it goes down, 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 down. This is, this is a doorstop. Basically it's garbage. She's garbage. She's done. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove all my studs here for the for the heads because we're gonna go ahead See I was uh, penny pinching because the Porsche engine was going to get taken apart high flow heads and I was gonna take the the engine block to get uh, Get the registers for the cylinders open 
to 103 millimeters. And I was get this is going to be a 2.4 liter engine with a big cam. Okay, big. It was going to be a 86A, which requires uh, dual springs. Anyways, that was the whole idea. But now there goes my budget. She's gone. So we're we're still going to keep saving for this for this you know transformation from stock to monster uh, type 4 engine he 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 and uh, we're gonna go ahead and order a bubble top I'm not too sure if I'm gonna go aluminum or magnesium um, I've heard that it's, it's basically the same uh, the quality the strength is about the same there is no difference in this in the strength the only difference is aluminum is about a couple of pounds heavier I don't know how many maybe 20 pounds or something I don't know not sure but I'm debating because they're ex almost exactly the same price aluminum or magnesium they're almost exactly the same price so there you go so that's my thing right now perfect hope you like the music dun, dun. and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go bubble top that way I don't have to machine anything on the inside and I'm going to get it pre-ordered with uh, 90 90.5 90 registers for the cylinders so everything just going to slap right in my bearings are all going to be standard standard thrust standard uh, uh, saddle seats uh, standard crank everything standard because the crank there is zero wear on the journals zero i just i checked them out and i just couldn't believe it there is zero wear because it's chromoly and it's got that hardening thing on the journals um that uh very to very little to nowhere and that's what we've got right now it's like a brand new crank pistons are perfect uh my rings are perfect the i'm not gonna i mean i have never ever seen cam bearings look like new they look like brand new they have zero wear on the surface I've never seen that before this is probably because I did the HVX mod I don't know I don't know if I said that right where you drill this hole right here and you go all the way through I mean all the way through so that the the uh, the other side gets um, oil more oil to the other side on the valve train I don't remember if it was this one or this one. I don't remember which one. I think it's this one. That's the one. Yeah. Anyways. And I, I'm probably thinking that I'm probably going to end up doing the exact same thing to the new block before we install everything. So we'll go over that. I mean, you guys might have fun with that. A lot of people say, ah, don't do that. No, no, no. I just saw my Valtrain. Oh, my God. It is perfect. Perfect. And I've got an FK42 cam, which is horrible on the on the valve train horrible it's the worst cams all the fk series are the worst cams for your valve train but they make a lot of power they're really 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 hard on it and um, i'm telling you my cam bearings look like brand spanking new even my thrust bearing was perfect because i polished the uh the surface on the thrust cam anyway that's it adios muchachos a los guachos